Let's talk about tests. There's a ton of nuance and opinions. What specifically is being tested? Is it too brittle, too verbose, too hacky, too gross? It almost feels religious. This video is part of a series where I'm building a budget tracking app from scratch. All of the code is on GitHub with a link in the description. I'm gonna show how I chose to scale tests in this project. It's certainly not without trade-offs. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. Many tests have three main components. A range, where we set everything up, act, where the thing we're testing runs, and assert, making sure that the result matches our expectations. But as a data model evolves, dependency chains start to grow, and so does the arrange step. While LLMs can probably scan through a complex test setup and understand it quickly, I know I haven't fully surrendered my coding to the machines. I need to be able to understand and contribute to my tests to make sure that the software will continue to reliably operate in the face of change. In the budgie application, transactions belong to a budget and budgets belong to a user. And there's gonna be more models in the future. Without any fixtures or factories, I might end up writing a test that looks something like this, dedicating seven lines to establishing intermediate models when all I really care about is the transactions. We've already collapsed some of the requirements by automatically generating the user behind a budget in a previous video. And we could totally continue adding functions like add budget if necessary to create budgets in a hypothetical transaction fixture function. That's completely valid. But at a certain point, I prefer to eject from this pattern and standardize the construction of related schema models through a package called Ex Machina. Inspired by the factory bot Ruby gem, Ex Machina exposes a common set of functions to build, insert, and generate valid parameters for chains of ectoschema dependencies. And installing it isn't very tricky. Just add it to mix.exs and make sure that its server is started in testhelper.exs. I'm gonna drop a basic factory into the project representing the data model so far. So I'll go to test, support, and create factory.ex. Over time, you can scale your factory to be in multiple files, but for right now, I've got the user factory, the budget factory, and the budget transaction factory. By convention, any method that ends in the factory suffix will get all of those utility methods I showed a moment ago. Two features you'll often use are sequence and build. Sequence just increments a number and passes it into a callback. In the case of the budget name, we toss that number into a string to create budget one, budget two, and so on. If you've never seen the ampersand function shorthand, it's just a more terse representation of an anonymous function. These two lines are equivalent. Now build runs another factory and inserts that value into the field. When the budget factory runs without an explicit creator, it will build a user on the fly. Instead of having to write methods to insert this, like I did over in the fixture file, I just call build. To make this available in all of my tests, I'll import it in data case and in con case. I'm gonna migrate a few existing tests over to use the factory. Remember, all of the full code changes will be on GitHub. So over in tracking test, when we're creating a budget with valid data, instead of creating a user and then creating valid budget attributes, passing that user in and finally running that create, let's just use params with associations, passing in budget, that's the name of the factory that we're running, and then use those attributes to create a budget. So I'll run mix test and it will succeed. Now let's update the list budgets test. Right now, we create a single budget and then make sure that that budget is returned. Instead, we can use insert pair as a shorthand for creating two instances and putting them into the database. Instead of testing that a single budget is returned, we can make sure that multiple ones are. But when I run this test, it fails. Here's one of those trade-offs I was talking about. List budgets doesn't eagerly preload the creator of each budget. That's an option that we built into the preload argument. But the factory creates the full dependency chain and returns those in the representation of the schema instances. 
So the objects aren't exactly equal and the test fails. Now, lots of you are probably gonna be angry about this solution, but I added a little helper to my factory for this situation. I called it without preloads. This function operates on a model or a list of models running a function called ecto.resetfields to unload dependencies. And if I put it in place, then the tests will pass. I asked online about this and saw some interesting recommendations, ranging from just compare the IDs to don't build dependencies in factories to factories are terrible, avoid them like the plague. Like I said, there's a lot of opinions in this space, and I sincerely appreciate the suggestions. Decide what's best for your project and your team. And while we're on the topic of testing, let's add code coverage to the equation. In all of my Elixir projects, I use a package called xcoveralls to generate coverage reports. It is also really easy to set up. If I go into mix.exs, it is just a new test dependency, and it needs to be registered as the test coverage tool. This installation also uses the preferred CLI environment property of the mix project. This means that when these mix tasks are ran, they will by default use the test mix environment. Now, if I run mix coveralls, I can see a full test coverage report from my project. This package can also generate JSON reports that services like CodeCov, not sponsored, can ingest as well as an HTML version for local browsing. Both of these report formats show up in the cover directory. If I run mix coveralls.html, followed by open and open up that page, I can see what is covered and what is not. Next time, we'll add editing and deleting to our transaction UI. In the meantime, it looks like I have a lot of testing to catch up on. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.